My name is uh, Torbjørn Bull Jensen, and I'm the CEO of Kane Crypto. We're a Nasdaq Stockholm listed company, building a platform for users to learn, trade, and invest in Bitcoin and digital assets. And I'm here today to present some of the latest findings in a research report uh, our research team has put together on the state of the Lightning Network. Where we've done a deep dive into the metrics and seen how this network is evolving, looking beyond just the public metrics. So right now, as we know, Bitcoin is monetizing fast and it's on track to become digital gold, which is a pretty obvious use case in a world where the monetary expansion is ever expanding and accelerating while the supply of Bitcoin is absolutely finite. And while this is a great use case and has a great market opportunity, Bitcoin has in it so much more. Bitcoin has also the potential to revolutionize payments. And when I discovered Bitcoin back in 2012, that's what really caught my interest. When I did my master thesis on Bitcoin, what really blew my mind was the fact that Bitcoin was the first digital bearer asset in the world. A digital asset without any counterparty risk, without any claim. Meaning that you could take your local currency, buy Bitcoin, send that to the other side of the world and have final settlement. And that you could do that on a Sunday. That's extremely powerful. That makes it possible to bypass the whole correspondent banking system. In addition, if you look at the payment world, it's full of silos, different platforms, different networks that don't communicate between each other. But when these platforms and uh, payment providers add support for Bitcoin, suddenly they get interoperable. We get the flexibility of email, where you just ask someone about their address, not whether they're using Yahoo or whether they're using uh, Outlook. And we get that since these players are now integrating Bitcoin. You can now transfer money from PayPal to Revolut to Cash App because they all support the transfer of Bitcoin. And what is then a precondition for this to really take off, to really accelerate, is two components. One, you need good liquidity. When I did my thesis on Bitcoin back in 2014, the cost of exchanging between fiat currency and Bitcoin was around 10%. And there was basically one exchange in the world where you could do this, Mt. Cox. So it didn't actually help you when it came to moving money across the world. Due to all of the infrastructure built out for those who want to trade, you can now kind of exchange Bitcoin effectively all over the world, any day of the week, any day of the year. So liquidity has been sold, more or less, and it continues to become better and better. The other thing you would need for this use case for payment to work is scalability. You need a way to be able to handle massive throughput, massive volume. And luckily, someone came up with the idea of Lightning, a network of routable payment channels that in theory can enable up to millions of transactions per second and without having to wait for block times, without having to compete for the scarce block space. So right now we're having this situation where both of the preconditions to unlock the payment potential of Bitcoin is being solved in parallel. And this means that we are probably at the start of the next phase of Bitcoin, where the previous were Bitcoin monetizing and kind of becoming digital gold, and the next is Bitcoin as a payment rail taking over in the future. And for this to happen, of course, companies need to implement Lightning. And what's very positive to see is that we see more and more big crypto companies supporting Lightning. Companies like Cash App, Bitfinex, OKCoin, an announcement yesterday from BitPay adding support for Lightning. But it's not only these big companies that are adding this. What started out as an idea, not too dissimilar from Bitcoin, on a uh, white paper, has now become a thriving ecosystem with tons of different players trying out different business models, building out infrastructure, building out nodes, building out supporting tools to make the Lightning Network the, to, into something that can actually work. And it's this ecosystem that we looked into in our report that we recently published today on arcane.no slash research, if you want to download it, the state of lightning, and this is the second follow-up uh, report. We're digging into the ecosystem, we're giving you the full overview, and we're also looking behind the public metrics. We've collected data from all of the largest players in the space to be able to estimate the actual transaction volume, the actual usage, and to give a much more holistic picture than what you get from only looking at, say, channel capacity. 
So looking at how Lightning is used right now, and this is data from year to date, we see that it's micropayments that's dominating when we look at the number of transactions. So this is typically gaming platforms that are adding microtransactions in Bitcoin as a reward for those who participate in their game. And that's completely dominant when it comes to the number of transactions. If we, however, look at the volume of transactions, the value transferred, it's very clear that it's actually peer-to-peer -peer transfers between individuals that is dominant and makes up around half of the transaction volume. This is followed by around a third, which goes uh, to deposits and withdrawals in relation to trading, both on exchanges like, you know, or like Bitfinex, but also on dedicated lightning exchanges like Allen Markets. And then around 20% goes to merchants and different kind of web stores where we buy stuff paying with Lightning. What's interesting here is to see that while micropayments dominate in number of transactions, it's minuscule when it comes to volume. And this shows the strength of the Lightning Network in enabling microtransactions and new business models. If you look at the growth, this is the chart that most people see on Twitter kind of the public capacity in the Lightning Network, the number of nodes, the number, like the amount of liquidity which is bound up in the network, which has seen strong growth. It has 3 x over the year over year. And although the growth rate has flattened a little bit since the kind of really strong growth at the end of last year, it's still kind of going really fast. A lot of people might look at these numbers and compare it to some DeFi growth rates and think that this is very low. But you have to remember that this is actual uh, adoption. A lot of the growth rates you're seeing in DeFi is people who want to gamble on a subsidized platform who are incentivized massively by a subsidy to just jump in on some staking coin. And they'll jump to the next one as the subsidy runs out. This is growth driven by people who are actually using this, by enthusiasts, by people who see that their payments are easier done when using Lightning. And although we see strong growth in these public metrics, uh, metrics, more importantly, if we look at the underlying volumes, if you look at how much is actually transacted, the growth is actually way higher. Because if you look at the growth in transaction volume, we're looking at 400% growth year over year. And this is actually expected. You don't expect actually to see a linear correlation between public channels, public nodes, and usage. And the reason is, of course, that when you interact with the Lightning Network, you can use a third party. And that third party doesn't need to open more channels just because it has more users. Some critics will say, well, if you're using a third party, isn't that defeating the whole purpose of crypto? Well, actually, no. Because you can keep all your savings in your cold storage, and you can have only what you spend on a daily basis with that third party. And if you don't like that third party, or if that third party tries to censor you, you can switch to another. So it's a little bit like email, where you can choose whatever client you like. So the takeaway here is that the use of the Lightning Network is actually growing three times faster than indicated by the number of public nodes. It's also where, uh, worth bearing in mind that when you look at the capacity in the network, you really don't want that to grow linearly with usage. Because unlike Bitcoin, which you hodl uh, for a, like, and, and can you lock down, Bitcoin's in Lightning, you want to exchange as fast as possible. So a tiny amount of liquidity locked up in the network can have a massive velocity can circulate and process a big economy. And that's where part of the efficiency is coming from. But then, it's actually the perhaps absolutely most important metric. And that is access to Lightning. August last year, our estimate was that around 100, 150,000 users globally had wallet software that supported Lightning. Just a few months later in October, that number 100x when El Salvador rolled out uh, Lightning and payments uh, as kind of, uh, in El Salvador, but also when Paxful added support for Lightning. And then when Cash App added support for Lightning, that number 10x again. So compared to a little over half a year ago, we have now close to 100 million users who have access. And that really changes the game. Because before these users had access, when it was only 100,000 globally, it didn't make sense for any merchants to add support for Lightning. Because why would you? It was a tiny little group of supporters who could you kind of use it. But now, when you have 100 million users, it suddenly makes sense for BitPay to add Lightning support. 
And then merchants add Lightning support, it becomes more valuable for users to get uh, applications that support Lightning. So what we're seeing now is a vicious cycle that will unfold over the years to come, where the network effects really accelerates the adoption, where the more users have Lightning, the more usefulness it'll be to add Lightning as a merchant or kind of add places where you can use it. And then that will feed back attracting more users. So this vicious cycle is what I believe will drive the adoption over the next year, and which, which will eventually position Bitcoin as the dominant payment network, not only for Bitcoin transfers, but for any transfers globally. So that was my presentation. Thank you so much for listening. Go to our webpage and download it, arcane.no slash research, and feel free to reach out if you have any questions after this presentation. And have a great day, everyone.